Hi and welcome to Polly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So today we're going to do something just very slightly different. As you can see I've got some kaleidoscope canes in front of me and these are ones that I've been doing as a series that I challenged myself with. Towards the end of last year I was looking through my boxes of canes and I thought I need to amalgamate some of these canes and put them into more boxes or push all the boxes together so that I've actually got more boxes to put more canes in because those of you who know me know that I quite like making canes um, and I don't always do an awful lot with the canes I've finished particularly when I've done them for YouTube videos where I make several different um, colour options for you and sometimes I make things with them but I don't have time to make everything or to use all the canes up so as I was going through the boxes when I started I suddenly thought actually as I'm going through them let's pull out some of the canes which I know I probably won't do anything else with put them all together and amalgamate them and make a new kaleidoscope pattern so I thought if I do one of those for every box that I've got then I'll end up with quite a few nice kaleidoscope patterns and it was only a couple of days later when I counted up the number of boxes I have that I realised I've got 150. So it's going to take me a while to do this. However, I started posting them online and people showed quite an interest um, and were keen to see what I do. So I'm sort of doing them every sort of week. I sort of do two or three and um, show those online. So these are some of the ones I've already done. But somebody mentioned that it would be a good idea rather than doing the fast forward that I do on Instagram and Facebook to show the complete process of how I start with the old canes and how I get them into the kaleidoscope scopes and I thought that's not a bad idea um, because I have learned a lot again as I'm doing it I've learned things to do how to take some of the canes some of the canes I'm using are over 10 years old they are very and this is Fimo soft most of it so they do tend to crack and they are quite crumbly so I've, I've already done the video so I know it works yay um, so but what I did find even with doing this video is that yes I did get cracking in some of the canes so it is a useful video to do I think because it shows you and I have got a finished kaleidoscope and it is quite nice um, from the one I've done for this video but it shows that even when you've got old canes and even when they do crack and you've got some canes that are older some canes that are newer and I've put them all together in a kaleidoscope you can still get enough to give yourself really quite a decent size veneer these might well be bowls um, there's other things I can do with them um, but you can get some lovely patterns out of your kaleidoscopes using up some old canes and also you don't have to have a lot if you've got probably about an inch a couple of centimeters of cane which isn't distorted so you've got the same pattern from one end through to the other that's all you need because you can change the shape of them and um, get them down until you sort of put them all together and create new shapes to kaleidoscope with it's also quite handy to have a couple of Skinner blends in with your kaleidoscopes and again I'm quite lucky in that I usually make too much when I'm making a Skinner blend and my habit is I chop off bits of them and think oh I'm sure I'll use that at some stage and they go in the cane boxes as well. So I've got quite a mishmash of old canes, Skinner blends, sometimes some large chunks of just plain colours and I do find the odd veneers in there as well where I've done something in the past and think yes I'll get round to doing something and never do so this is thanks to the lady and I will try and look her up and I'll put her name on the video screen if I can find who it was because it was a couple of weeks back now that she mentioned that this would be a good idea so thank you for that hopefully there's some tips and techniques in here which will help you with your kaleidoscopes and just have fun with it just experiment and just relax and enjoy it so we'll start out with doing the equipment and what you need which isn't a lot and then we'll go straight on to me opening up box 23 and finding out what we've got to make this kaleidoscope with. To make a kaleidoscope with some of the old ends of my canes um, I'm not going to use a huge amount of equipment just the normal sort of stuff you'd have for um, polymer clay. I will be using a polymer clay blade sometimes refer to this as a tissue blade, a craft knife, a small roller a four millimeter cable needle or something similar and it's something that I'm going to use a to make a groove in a couple of places but also just to maneuver slices of canes together um, to join nicely in our finished veneer. I have an older polymer clay blade which I've put some masking tape on because it was a blunt one um, and I use that to butt up against side of things but I've masked it so I'm certainly not going to cut my hand on the edge of the blade. When I'm putting my veneer together I just use a hexa hexagon just as a way of giving me a little something to measure on to make sure I'm putting a nice hexagon veneer together. 
These are from the staggered stencil shapes from Polymer Clay UK Tools. If you don't have any of these, then just get yourself um, a hexagon shape. Just cut yourself out something just to give yourself um, a bit of a, a guide. It, it does make an enormous difference when you're putting them together, but I will put a link to these in the details below the video description. I also use a Brea roller just because it's easier for the finished veneer at the end. When I'm smoothing down my veneer right at the very end, I just use a piece of wax paper big enough to go over your veneer. I just use a ruler at one point just to mark out a grid on some scrap clay. And I do use these measuring sheets um, to work with with the veneer, but also when I'm reducing my cane to make sure I get the right size. I've got a couple of them that I'll be using today. And these are freely available from www.printablepaper.net. And I've just laminated them and that's particularly why I use them um, because it's much easier to work on. So they're freely downloadable. I'm using the four squares to an inch, but you can get them in centimeters if you prefer. I'm working on a large tile and I will use biodegradable wet wipes and um, tissues just to clean my hands and equipment as I go along and also I'll be using a pasta machine to do the scrap clay and just to rejuvenate some um, Skinner blends and I'll come on to that later. If you don't have a pasta machine you can just simply set stacks of playing cards on either side of your clay and with a roller roll over the top and that will give the same effect. So that's it for all the equipment you need. Um, to move on to the clay I will be using some scrap clay underneath my veneer. It's probably about, I mean that's that's more than enough, um, probably about one packs, one small packs worth, so about two ounces of clay because I'm only going to do a thin setting so that should be all you need. And the other thing you need are some old scrap or ends of canes that you've finished with or don't want to use much anymore and this isn't the box I've worked on in the video because I've already done that and I shoot this bit afterwards so you'll see the box I'm working on but you will need just a variety and actually this is one box I have not yet done for my challenge so um, that'll be fun when I get onto that one quite a few rose canes there but just little bits of canes and they can be the bits where you've got sort of um, the reduced end. So as long as you've got enough where you can take about that much off when it's made smaller, that you can put them all together to kaleidoscope, that's all you need. Um, yeah, interesting ones in there. So that'll be a box for another day. So take as many as you need and use as many as you have. There is no size that you need to make this kaleidoscope for. Mine ended up probably about that width, which most of them do, but that's because I have quite a few canes in my boxes. You can do this with just four, five, six little bits of leftover canes, and then the odd Skinner blend thrown is very good if you happen to have a Skinner blend. Oh, what is a nice leaf in there as well. I'll have to get back to this box another time. So that's all we need. So let's move straight on to box number 23 of my challenge on making a kaleidoscope from each of every 150 boxes of canes that I have. So here's one of my typical boxes and this is going to be box number 23 in my collection as I'm going through my boxes and as you can see it's literally just a, a mishmash of canes. So what I do is I have a look and this, this is very typical of me, I'll cut slices off and then I'll keep them just in case I might want to use them at some stage um, and then other ones when I've made a cane when I'm experimenting I'll have quite a nice large chunk and then I need to decide when I'm going through the boxes what I'm going to keep and perhaps if there's enough to use for another project or what will be good to make into a kaleidoscope. So that, there's quite a lot of that, so I may not use that, but there's not so much of that. So that is something that I would consider that yes, it would be quite good for a kaleidoscope. So when I'm sorting out my boxes, I'll put some on one side that might be kaleidoscope and some that I'm probably going to keep on the other. And what I really like to find is when I've got little bits of leftover Skinner blends. So again, I will take those out because I'm a terror. When I'm making Skinner blends, I will quite often make more than I need and I'll just keep a little off cut just in case I might use it at some stage in the future. So again, they can go into a kaleidoscope. So again, small little bits. Now, there's only a little bit of that one left because that's going to be quite distorted at that end. But if I reduce that one down, so it's something like that could be useful. Oh, oh look, there's a block of um, Skinner Blend there, so again, that's quite handy. Again, sometimes just plain colours, so that's a bit of plain white, so that can go. Oh, 
little round there it was obviously used for another cane so that sort of thing and I will just work my way through seeing what I've got and putting things anything that I think is possible at the moment I'll put onto the kaleidoscope side and any leftover little bits of clay as well because I will give myself the opportunity if I haven't got any um, Skinner blends of actually making up new Skinner blends with any leftover bits of clay oh that's a tiny don't you can see that's a tiny little bit left over from the um, peacock petal tutorial so that's um also oh, that's quite interesting so that will date this box so that's probably about four years probably about four years old a little bit of a leaf cane there that's a more recent one and i do that as well sometimes i'll put more recent canes in if i've got leftover canes i'll just find a box oh that's quite a nice little bit a roll of skinner blend there and I will just work my way through. So those, I'll probably now decide that, yes, I'm never going to use those again. But I will put those into my blue clay box because um, they'll mix up into a nice colour of blue. So I can go into somewhere different. And I'll just keep working my way through, seeing what I've got as I go through. Oh, wow, I've got a huge collection of Skinner blends here. So this is obviously one of the boxes I was collecting Skinner blends in. And I also have here, further down, some finished kaleidoscope veneers as well. So I'll keep those off to one side, see what I've got. These I was obviously going to use at some stage to make up independence or something. If they're not too old, then they still can be used to make up into those. If they're cracked, they'll go into the scrap box. So I've actually got quite a lot in here, so we should be able to make a nice kaleidoscope. So what I'm going to do is I'll carry on just getting the last few bits out and then I'll make a collection of the ones... Oh, that's a nice bit of that one. Make a collection of the ones that I think will be useful um, to make a kaleidoscope for and bring you back when I've got those ready. And the rest I will pack back in the box nice and neatly, getting rid of all the leftover tiny little bits like this that I probably won't use again and they can all go in the scrap pile. So these are the ones I've gone for. So I've got a nice sort of colour mix here, sort of going slightly more to the greens, the yellows and the oranges, rather than the bright reds or the purples for this time. Um, but with a couple of blues, just to add that nice sort of um, colour mix in there. So I like to get a, a nice broad pattern. And I've picked out just a couple of the um, Skinner blends, both with the green and blue um, blend. So I'm going to put those on one side because I will recondition those in the pasta machine and I will also keep out the white because it's just a plain colour. So um, I will condition that as well and I might add some of that into one of these to make one of those larger so that I can weave it through the blend. Now these canes, there are a variety of ages for these. A couple of them I think aren't that old, probably only about two years, but a couple are really sort of quite hard and so maybe sort of like three four or even more years old and I've actually done this technique with canes that are up to 10 years old so what I want to do is I want to get them all just slightly warmed up to give me a, a head start now some of the clays are easier to get back and um, when they're older than others um it's like primo is quite a good one and the cernet um fimo particularly the fimo soft can go a little bit cracky once you've had it um a while and they've been sat for a while but you can get it back. So the way I do it is I use wheat bags. And these are the ones that you just put in your microwave. Um, you can almost just put them on a radiator because we're not going for hot. We are going for gentle body heat. Now, if you don't have one of these, you could actually put these around your body, um, sort of in a pocket or something, obviously wrap them all up first. And gentle body heat for about 20 minutes um, will be enough to bring them back. Just they get slightly malleable and I'll show you what else I do with them once we've got them to that stage. But this, when I've got a lot of canes, is um, something that I use. And I've got, this is a long one and I actually have two of these and what I've done is I've put them in my microwave but not for very long so these aren't hot that you'd have to warm up your body which is obviously what they're mainly used for but they are just gentle gentle body heat so less than a minute um, in the microwave for mine um, in order to get them just that gentle. so you put it around and you almost can't feel it because it's just more or less the same as your body but it is warmer than these will be so what I do is I get myself a towel, move this off to one side, I'll put my wheat bag down, the first one, and then I will get 
some deli wrap. Let's just zoom out a bit here so you can see it slightly more. Put my deli wrap and then I will simply lay these on top of the deli wrap in a way that's likely to get the heat down because what we're looking for is to get the heat down right to the center in a nice even fashion so i'm not overheating them I'm certainly getting nowhere near baking them because we certainly don't want that but just enough that it's going to give me a slight warming up now i'm putting them if i can so they're not touching each other and i will wrap the deli sheet over the top put another sheet over second wheat bag over the top and around them and then wrap the whole thing up in the towel and I will leave it like that for about an hour and once we've done that then we can start manipulating the canes to create a nice kaleidoscope. So whilst they're gently warming I can recondition the Skinner blends that I've chosen to use. Now there's a couple of things you can do with the Skinner blends. First thing I will do is just fold it in half to see how much and how quickly it breaks. So it's broken fairly quickly um, but actually it's not too bad. It hasn't crumbled and hasn't broken into several pieces. So I reckon I can get away with putting these straight back through the pasta machine. If it had broken into several pieces, then what I would do is I would actually cut it generally into three separate parts, condition that clay as one colour, the middle clay as another colour and that clay as a colour and then put them back together, the three pieces, to create myself a new Skinner blend. It's not, it won't be quite as good a blend as the original one but it will still work and give you that colour combination. But because these are okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one through on a thin setting. First thing I'm going to do is give it a quick roll. And again, the fact that it's rolled back there together quite easily means that that should be fine, putting it back through the pasta machine. So I'm going to put it through the pasta machine on a thin setting. If you don't have a pasta machine, then simply roll it thin, fold, roll it, fold and roll it and do it that way instead. But I'll put that through probably on setting number seven of my pasta machines, quite thin. And on my machine, naught is thick and nine is thin. So you can see there it has gone through and hasn't split up too much so I can now fold that back up and put it back through the pasta machine several times, fold first till I get the nice smooth blend. This one's a much smaller piece but I'll do the same again so I'll give that a roll and again it's mended back so I know that that's okay to put through the pasta machine, it's the same thing. But for this one because I've got a smaller piece and I want, I want a Skinner blend that's about sort of width and that sort of length so I can weave it through um, the kaleidoscope that I'm doing because that's something I've decided that I quite like to do when I'm making my kaleidoscopes. So I'm going to take a little bit of this white clay, get that conditioned, keep a little bit separate because I'm just going to leave some that's just a pure white so I can put some of that in the kaleidoscope as well and with this I'll get it conditioned and I'll add a sheet of the white on top of this one and then put it back through so I get a, a a paler shade of a Skinner blend but it's still one that I can use so I'll show you what I mean. So my white's gone through, it picked up quite a bit of dirt so it's not quite so white now as it should be um, but what I'm going to do is I'll fold that up like that, put that on top of the white and now put that back through the pasta machine, fold first and keep the normal thing that we do with a Skinner blend, fold first, back, forwards, back through the pasta machine, always fold first to end up with a nice blend of a slightly lighter, paler shade of that blend. And if you're unsure about Skinner blends, then I'll put a link to the video I have about Skinner blends in the details below this one. So I'll keep putting that through on a medium setting, about setting number three, um, and I'll bring you back when I've got that done. So there we go, ended up with a nice Skinner blend, slightly paler, and I was going to neaten off the ends, and it's about the right height what I want for my kaleidoscopes because they generally work about an inch and a half, four centimetres in height. So I'll get the white conditioned, I'll get that one reconditioned and with this one I'm going to just fold that in half and then I'll put it back through the pasta machine on the same setting I was working on which is setting number three to get myself a longer strip and then back through my thinnest usable setting on my pasta machine to get the longest thinnest strip I can. If you know that your machine shreds or tears the clay as it goes through, then go down one step at a time rather than going straight down to your thinnest setting. And then we're just going to concertina this backwards and forwards to give ourselves a small Skinner blend 
block that can fit somewhere into our kaleidoscope. But it's good to have just these plain areas of colour that you can add in and I'm going to pinch it at the light green end and press it down into a triangular shape because it's more likely to fit nicely into some part of our design in that shape. And if it doesn't, then I can simply change it when we get to that stage. I'll make it slightly longer than I need so I can chop off the ends. And they'll be neat. And then that's another part to add into our kaleidoscope. Having left them and the wheat bags are almost now getting even cool, I can start processing each one. So what I do is I take them out one at a time. So let's start with this one. And this one I know was quite hard because this is quite an old cane. So the first thing I will do is actually try and make them shorter and wider. So I'm not going to elongate them because you're more likely to crack them if they go that way. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to press down on it with the heel of my hand. Because I'm trying to get all the clay to start working and moving again. Now, sometimes they're so old and they've sort of been left for so long that it doesn't work. Having done that, I can sort of start moving it inwards. Um, in which case, if they start cracking really badly, then there really is nothing left for them but to either put them back um, and mix them up completely to get yourself a new plain colour or just to put them back into um, the scrap heap. But this one's starting to move. As you can see there, it's starting. And this was actually really quite old. I was thinking back to when I did this one. This is for a daffodil. This could actually be sort of a lot older, sort of like a good sort of six or seven years old. But you can see it's starting to move. And that's what I want, where the whole thing's starting to move. The other thing I do is when I'm reducing these down and getting them to the size and shape I want, if I've got one that I can see is cracking badly on the edges, I try not to put that on the very points of my triangular kaleidoscope because you know then it's going to crack because the points take the most pressure. So that's actually starting to move so what I want to do now is think about the shape I want. Um, so I've got those lines going that way so what I'll do is I'm going to elongate it so I'll press it down on one side and when I'm creating these kaleidoscopes I'm looking for curves and long sort of lineal motions um, just to take the eye out from being all sort of little squat triangles or circles. So let's put that into that sort of shape and now I'm going to press down and I can see there already it is starting to crack. So it is usable but I need to make sure this isn't one that's going to be at the corner of my triangle because it will crack too much. So I'm just pressing down and elongating it because I want it to be the same height as all the other ones I'm working, excluding the um, wastage on either end. What I will also sometimes do is if I've got a bit that's cracked a lot, I will simply cut it off and just reduce the bit that isn't cracked so much. The other thing I do when I'm reducing is I'll quite often put my fingers on the end so that I stop it going out too much and it has a flatter end to it. So let's see what we've got now. And the other thing of course with it being a kaleidoscope is I do want each end to be roughly the same shape. So I'm going to press down because I need that bit to come out and press down and actually it needs to be slightly longer. If I put that in the middle so that any of these cracked bits are encased in other clay that's nice and soft then it shouldn't take so much pressure on them and it should be okay. Okay so that's one piece done and then I will repeat exactly the same with all the other pieces. Changing the shape of them moving them in, sort of pressing them down to start with and this one I'll go nice long and thin because it's sort of a leaf shape just working it around, pressing it in not doing it too quickly, taking my time slowly, slowly building up so that I'm trying to get all the clay to work, be at the same temperature and the same amount of flexibility at the same time 
so slowly slowly and if this one doesn't crack I might well put this one as one of the points because it's a nice little leaf shape there so just gently pressing in trying to get it all moving and eventually I want to get this the same height as these ones Okay, so that's about the same height. Now I have got some cracks again down the green side. Now the other thing you can do at this stage, particularly if you know you're going to be putting one in the middle of the, the cane um, kaleidoscope, you can get a little bit of liquid clay and just add a little bit of liquid clay just where those little tears are. Now I wouldn't do this if it's on the outside, but say I wouldn't put this piece on the outside anyway. Um, but it can just add a little extra something, so I'll just press that in to where those cracks were. And it can just help a little bit with easing over any of the cracks. So let's go, got this bigger one here. So let's see how he's doing. So I know I've got this end isn't quite the same because this is the distorted end of a cane where I've obviously used this end of it. But I will reduce this down with this distorted end on still to start with till I get it to the size I want and then cut off the distorted end because if I cut it off now all that will happen is the cut end will also become distorted um, so you therefore lose some of the better cane this one doesn't feel quite as hard so it's obviously a slightly younger cane so I should just be able to press this one down hopefully As it's cracking down the sides, I'm then going to press in on the sides to take away the pressure from those points. So you see what I mean about the fact that it's the points that normally crack the most. But we'll put that into that sort of shape and see how we're doing. So that's my non-distorted end. So let's now chop off. So I want the pattern to be roughly the same, so that's not too bad. So there wasn't too much distortion on that one. So by the time I cut off this distorted end, we should have our next piece to go. And I'm going to fast forward now because I've shown you most of the techniques. Some of these I'll go very long and thin. Some of them I'll make sort of more triangular shapes. But I'll get them all out to see how they're going and put them into a variety of different shapes ready to put together into the kaleidoscope.
Okay, so those are all the cut off end bits, the distorted bits, and they can all go into the scrap pile to make the underneath clay that we're going to set the veneer on in a minute. These ones all reduced down quite nicely, so I put them on one side. Those are all the ones which are a bit cracky, so I need to make sure I put those towards the middle of the piece. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to choose three pieces to make the three corners and then build up the cane in between. And then I'll just take off the top of that and that will weave in between some of the others. So let's go him for one corner. That one for another. And let's do that one for another. So I know that he was a bit cracky, but he wasn't actually too bad. So we'll put him down by the side of the blue one. That one was cracky, so we want him to go. Actually, we can bend him over the top of that one. I'm looking for colours that if you notice are going sort of slightly opposite the ones that they're next to. Sometimes it's nice to do the opposite, sometimes it's nice to do a grouping of similar colours. Um, and we'll start weaving this through. I think we'll weave this through from the edge. And it can go down there. Let's take another one of the, because that'll give us a nice green spot in the middle. That blue was a bit cracky but not too bad, so we'll put him over here. And so we'll weave him back here again. Right, that red one, that was another little cracky one. So we'll put him... Should we put him in so he's at the edge, but down the middle? So... Let's have a think. So a little green one down there, that can go on there. And then we can get that down the side there. We might not need the wire, let's have a look see. Put that, that slightly up there, so that goes down there. So we're building up. Those two can sit in there, because that one matches that one, so that looks quite good. And then we can have that up against there. That can go in the middle. Got a little bit of this, which actually is a image of that one so that will sit there and I think we'll just have a tiny little bit of white let's just make this into more of a triangular shape cut it off and we'll slot him in there so he's coming out the side and that is my rough triangular shape with a little Skinner blend going through all the crumbly ones in towards the centre so they're less likely to crack on the outside and then I'll just turn over to make sure that it's roughly the same on the other side and now we're at a stage where we can start reducing and because I've got the soft ones on the outside it shouldn't be quite as hard. Um, it's a big cane so it's still not going to be easy and obviously these aren't brand new um, canes so it will be slightly harder on the hands but as with most things just take your time go slowly don't try and rush it just slow and gentle and methodical repeating as it goes down so first thing I'm going to do is going to turn it down on one side and press from the top and I'm actually pressing downwards all the way down those sides and pressing them in rotate and do the same from the top I'm pressing down. I was also straightening because when we're going doing kaleidoscopes any of the lines that go down the sides you actually want to be nice and straight. Now these are two of the ones you can see there they're already cracking. They should start working fine as I press them in because they're on the side they should press into the clay behind them. If when you're reducing your cane you find you get big cracks then find um, take something like your um, cable needle create a groove down there and slot in some softer clay and again that should ease and fill up any cracks and still allow you to have a nice kaleidoscope at the end. So I'm just pressing in for the moment and we'll see how those cracks do go. I may need to do that, I may not, but I'll go down all three sides to start with till I've got my nice triangular shape and then the next thing I'm going to do is to set it flat on the tile but to pull these corner edges down because you'll find that sort of they're not completely neat, neat and even because you can see at the moment the blue one's way off um, the length of the other ones. So just pressing it down and very gently pulling just the bottom edge down till it meets the tile whilst holding the rest of it sort of upright. So just stretching out those corner ones to start with. 
turn over and repeat and that gives you more of a chance of getting a level kaleidoscope so the blue one is definitely a lot shorter still than the others but what I'm doing is I'm pressing it inwards so pressing it inwards is going to make it longer and then I'll get more of an even fit and more of an even shape to my kaleidoscope. So now I can start reducing it down and if I do the same pressure each time and rotate it, same pressure rotate, I will end up with completely equilateral triangle that we can use as a kaleidoscope. If you've got any of the cane caps or cane savers that will fit on the end and um, you want to get them so they're nice and snugly on the top, that will actually help with any um, distortion on, on either end as we go and they are great if you've got them. I quite like just doing it without anything on the end because I find it easier to move my hands down and I already need, I know I need quite a lot of scrap play in order to create a veneer to put underneath this when I create the kaleidoscope so I'm not that bothered so it's up to you what you do in that respect but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start reducing down and I'm pressing downwards as much as an, a long motion when it's this size and gradually reduce it down Now those, that one in particular, which was that um, leaf cane, that is, I can see it is going to crack badly. So I'm going to take one of the offcuts I had from the little blue cane, which I know this cane moved really quickly. And what I'll do is I'll put that through the pasta machine to give myself a completely new blue colour. And then I'll roll myself a nice thin log of this light blue. I'm going to do two, I'm going to do one across that one, which is the pink one, which is also cracking badly. And this is why I chose a box with some old canes, so you can see that there are ways around doing things. And then, as I mentioned before, with my needle, I am just going to create a groove, and I can feel how hard that is in comparison to all the other canes. So that's if, if you don't want to do this in yours, then don't use a cane that's a lot harder than all the others. But sometimes when I'm doing these kaleidoscopes, and it is a challenge, as I say, that I've set myself, some of the canes are really old. So I've had to work out ways of dealing with them and still getting a decent kaleidoscope at the end. So again, I'm going to go along where those two meet, just creating a groove. Sit that one in there. And then with the rest of this, I'm going to put it through a thinnish setting of the pasta machine and create a sheet going from this to this. So the whole of those, and actually probably halfway down here, is covered just by a sheet of the blue. And that should help infill any of the cracks. It won't make for a perfect kaleidoscope, but it will make for near enough a perfect kaleidoscope that it really won't notice when it's reduced down. There we go. That was setting number seven on my pasta machine. Now I always have a bit here which won't move as quickly as the rest because it is such an older cane. However, it will move enough once I get it working, once I get it going, that it will still create a good kaleidoscope when I get down to a smaller size. So now I've made that patching, I can start carrying on and reducing the cane. Okay, I'm going to stop it there because, as you'll no doubt see, I've got a big crack in that one there. And this shows how it is obviously best practice to use canes that aren't so old, but why 
I have been using canes that are old in with other canes because that's part of the challenge that I've set myself. Um, and in order to get over problems like this, I have to show you that they occur. So what I would do at this stage is I, I want to see what the pattern looks like. So I will chop down at this point so we give ourselves a little look. It won't be perfect pattern because obviously you've got that little bit there. But we can start to see how this one is going to look when it kaleidoscopes together. And then I will just work on the large part only and reduce that down to the size I want and keep the smaller part. And when I get it down smaller, if I get more cracks, then when I take my slices I will simply avoid the slices where the crack is and use pieces either side and the pieces with the crack you can use them for something else so for instance I could use that part of the cane with another slice and perhaps make a pair of earrings or something like that um, so it's not the end of the world but you need to be aware of these things and avoid them so I need, need to get this down to I'm going to go to about a one inch square so about the size on this measuring sheet and I will reduce this piece down I've also had a little bit of a crackage on the top here, but that's now pushing into itself, so that's really not going to matter in the finished piece. And I'll be looking at the lines, trying to make sure I keep these lines nice and straight and even as I go down the sides. And obviously up to this point, because that cane only goes that far, I know all of this on the end is effectively going to be um, wastage. Although having said that, of course, every time I take a slice through and put the two slices next to each other, you will still get a mirror image. So even though it won't be the same as the rest of the kaleidoscope pattern, again, it can still be used for things like individual pendants or earrings. So I will chop a bit of that off when I get it a bit smaller um, and put that to one side and use it for other things. Um, but this is the bit I'm going to be concentrating on to create all the slices I need to make my kaleidoscope. So again, I'll fast forward through this bit until we get down to the right size. Now I've got it finished and I've put it towards me in such a way that I can see these splits in that very old um, crumbly cane but I've still got more than enough to actually take all my slices in between and avoid those areas when I cut my slices. I know from experience that I need 54 slices um, in order to make my nice big kaleidoscope which I'm going to do and show you and when I take my slices I do it that way and work from the one side going backwards but I do it with my head right over the top so I can see exactly what I'm doing so obviously I can't then do it on camera um, but the slices I, I put this one off to one side just to show you the sort of size of slices that I'm going to take and it's not particularly even but I'm going to do something sort of about that size so quite nice and thick probably a good sort of two and a half to three millimetres thick. Now again, you can have machines which take slices for you and if you've got one of those, then absolutely use that to get nice even cane slices. And the important thing isn't so much the thickness or thinness of your slices, but the consistency. You want every slice to be as near the same as you can possibly get it. So I'm going to leave this cane to rest for a while. And by that, I mean just leave it sitting there so that it all sort of settles down because obviously I've manipulated it so much. And whilst I'm letting it rest, I'm going to take all these cane ends, which we had from earlier, plus some of my leftover scrap canes from other things I've been working on, and I'm going to make myself a nice, large, but fairly thin sheet of plain polymer clay that I can actually set my slices on. So I will do that on setting six of my pasta machines, so say quite thin, and make it big enough to fit on one of these measuring sheets. So I've got all my slices, missing out the bits where it's cracked and this is one of the reasons why I like doing it on a, a laminated sheet because then I can easily pick up my slices, just move them off, take away the bit that's distorted, keep them in order but there's less chance of me changing the shapes than pulling them off a tile. Those are all my slices ready to use. 
So there's the bits that are cracked, so they can go off to one side for use with something else. And they're ready now to go and be added to the veneer. So I've just rolled it onto the back of one of my laminated sheets, just because it's a plain back. And then you'd have seen this before in the polymer clay bowls hexagon design tutorial. I'll put a link to that in the details below this one. So all the details I've got of using the hexagons and also putting all the kaleidoscopes together are also in that video. These are from the staggered stencil shape sets from Polymer Clay UK. And again, I'll put a link to where you can get those from. But if you don't have those, just draw yourself a, a hexagon. You can get um, templates on the internet, free ones. Just draw yourself out a piece of card. It makes a huge difference when you're putting kaleidoscopes together to do this. And then I'm just going to, with my ruler, draw the lines across because this thing gives you just a good idea of where to place your cane slices to create a very nice even hexagon shape. The first thing I do, and I'm going to do this this time as well because I also want to put this on Instagram as well as doing the video for you, is I put my cane slices together in groups of three. So I will get myself another plain sheet, put the veneer to one side. I've got my cane slices here and picking up three at a time I will start to put them together. So the first thing I need to do is decide which bit's going towards the middle. So I think I'll put the blue towards the middle. And again, you can already see here that where the canes were, some were older than others and they've moved at different um, speeds through the cane, I've got gaps. So it's not a completely um, symmetrical equilateral triangle but that's fine because we're going to put the three pieces together as best we can and what I'm doing is I'm marrying up all of the edges to make sure I've got a nice even fit then making sure my fingertips are nice and clean I can hold on to that and use the edge of this to press down to give myself as neat a shape as I can take the next three And repeat with the blue in the middle, so marrying up the sides. Check which way around it is, that's going to be that way, so this bit is going to be that way. And do the same again. And at the moment I'm only putting them very gently next to each other because I'm not going to press them in until I get them on the veneer. But just so you can start to see the kaleidoscope pattern attach all come together. So I now know the next one is going to go around the outside, so I'm going to do a set of three. So that needs to go that way up. So now I know I've got that one. That's going to go around that way, up to there. And then this piece is going to go that way up. And again, press along the back I've got a nice thing and that piece is going to do there and I'll do the next five pieces around there. For the next three I match that one to start with and then put the others next to it. So that'll fit that way on and again build the others up around the outside in the same way. And then I just take two slices and match these up so that they're going to fit in between. I 
and I've started doing this purely because this was the way I was doing them on Instagram to show people how they went together but I found actually it's a really quick and easy way to put your kaleidoscope together and get nice easy really well matched um, finished pieces. I've got my scrap clay, I've got my hexagon marked out, I've got my craft knife and I've got my little um, safe tissue blade just to something to sort of um, push up against the sides and then it's simply a case of adding my pieces on and I'll add them on and then I'll look at the lines to check that they are actually going along the horizontal I'll quite often just with the blade push them together like that make them nice and flat and then when I put each piece on with my craft knife underneath I will very gently just maneuver to make sure that all the pieces join together neatly and then again smooth around there so I'm going to do that however as per normal I do it very sort of close actually so my head's probably about three inches above the clay because I am very short-sighted so I will try and do it so that my head is not in the way so you can see what I'm doing but if I do get in the way then I'll just cut it out but hopefully you'll see me build it up Okay, so there is the finished sheet. So the next thing I'll do is take away all the excess clay, just leaving myself a tiny little bit of the scrap clay as an edge, because I find this gets in the way when you're sort of doing your tidying up. And then, not with the point of the cable needle, but with this slightly um, flatter side, I will roll down each of the joins, just to make sure that they're nicely together and nicely matching. If I've got any, because I have cut all these by hand, if I've got any where one's particularly higher than another, then with a sharp blade, I will just very gently go in and take off any difference in the height. But you don't want to overdo that because you can end up losing um, your pattern if you do it too much, but I will do that. And I will do it over the whole of the piece. And then once I've done all that, I will bring you back and show you the last little bits I do to get a nice, finished, smooth sheet of kaleidoscoped clay. So with the veneer all now put together, so there's no holes, and with any sort of bits, sort of um, any extra heights or things just shaved off carefully with the tissue blade, the last thing I do is put a layer of wax paper right over the top you don't get as many creases if you put it on nicely with the wax paper and then with a stainless steel soap or some other burnishing tool I'm just going to carefully go right over the top to make sure I've got a, a smooth and even a surface as I can get. Oh, already feels nice and smooth. The very final thing I do is just with a clean brayer roller, just give it a nice roll. I will then cut away the last little bit of excess scrap clay from down the sides, first neating up the edges, take it off the sheet, leaving this in place so that I don't get any fingerprints or marks on this nice um, flat surface that I've worked so hard to get. Okay, 
as you saw there I went slowly around maneuvering it around just doing a little bit at a time taking it off um, and keeping my fingers well out of the way um, when I was putting the blade underneath and when we pull the paper off there is our lovely pristine kaleidoscoped veneer Now there's lots of things you can do with these. Um, I will be making bowls out of some of them in future. I will also probably be having some of them up for sale. So if that's something you're interested in buying, then pop over to my Etsy shop. The details are in the links below this video. I haven't got any on there yet. I say this is something I'm going to be doing in future. But depending on when you're watching the video, there might be some in the shops to go and have a look. Or you can get in touch with me if you're interested in any of the ones that I've done. As I mentioned, this is a series of 150 kaleidoscopes that I will be doing as a result of quite a few boxes of canes that I have. Um, so this will be ongoing and you can follow me on to see each one I do as I progress. And this one is number 23. I hope you enjoyed that. As I say, it wasn't a tutorial as much about caning as just what to do with old canes. How I managed to get some really quite old and crumbly and quite hard canes back into a use that's enough certainly to do something like this. And this, this is a relatively big veneer. So even though they cracked, you can make quite a decent kaleidoscope out of something like that. And obviously just use whichever canes you have to hand. But the main things I'd say was firstly make sure they're all at the same sort of warmth, which is why I use the wheat bags. Change the shapes, make some of them nice, long and thin. Don't stick to just clumps of triangles. Remember I had the Skinner blend and because my Skinner blend had a bit of blue and green in it, it really picks up the blue. See, it comes here around the outside of that leaf and just adds a little something into the mix as well. And to have some plain Skinner blends in there, as well as the pattern canes, means that you've got somewhere for the eye to rest as well. Um, and just, say, just have fun with kaleidoscopes. They are fantastical things to do, particularly from your leftover bits of scrap clay. I have got more videos to come, including a video I'm going to show you how to do this filigree technique, which is what I've been doing on some of the bowls that I've been making with my kaleidoscopes. So that one hopefully should be out in a couple of weeks time. But it's going to be a box, not a bowl, and I will show you how to do the filigree work. I've got lots of other videos you can watch as well, both on bowls and kaleidoscopes and all sorts of cane making. So you can make some canes and then do your own kaleidoscope as well. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. So that was number 23, so that just leaves me 127 to go and then I'll have reached my target. See you next time. Bye.